Okay, welcome back, everybody. It is August 23rd, and uh, we are on Aligning with Success. And speaking of success, I just wanted to give a hats out, hats off, a shout out, even though he's not watching, to my son, who crossed 100,000 followers on YouTube today and is less than 10,000 away from 1 million followers on TikTok. He's a sensation. Um, so I'm sure we're going to have to have him come on and give us some lessons on how to get our uh, our audience on TikTok and YouTube, since he seems to be doing so well at it. Anyways, um, welcome back to the call. Um, we had a, a pretty exciting event this past weekend, and I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, on this call, we can get some feedback because I think most of you probably attended and um, and I've got my notes as well from the call, but just uh, want to shout out to all the people who participated in the event. It was an exciting event. Uh, energetically speaking, it was very exciting and uh, nice pace. I hope all of you got your uh, pet pads. How many of you ordered your pet pad? Okay, let me ask a different question. How many of you have a pet? How many of you ordered your pet pad? Not yet. Okay. I will. <laughs> My daughter, as soon as she saw me placing an order, she says, do you do that with all the products? I said, yes. How am I going to sell something? I don't know what it is unless I have it. So yes, daughters. I buy every time Nikan comes out with a new product. So I have my sample, I have my experience and so forth. And so that's another lesson they're picking up from me in these uh, early startups of their business. Anyway, um, I do want to open the call to some comments about what you learned. So tonight, focus on what is your takeaway from this weekend's event, the Seiko Kai event. And I just want to remind you, if you had guests there, um, tell us also what was the uh, response from your guests. And, and if you didn't have guests there, ask yourself while you're listening to this, why didn't you have guests there? So um, let's go ahead and just open the channel up to anybody who wants to make a comment. What, what was a takeaway from this past Saturday? Any, any, any speaker, any particular aspect of the event? I will be happy to speak up, Mike. I found, way, the girls, I found the girls to be particularly articulate and honest in their comments. I had two young people, younger or older than them, but much younger than I, um, register as guests. And both of them got called into work. So I'm waiting for the recording and so are they. They're very much interested. I thought it was one of the best Seiko Kais we've ever had. Um, their honesty was impeccable. Sophia's um, presentation on going silver was right on the money. Um, I thought all the presenters were excellent and we, we saw a cross pollination of generations mm -hmm. and, um, and it went really smoothly. The two hours just flew by. But I thought uh, what the girls had to say is very impactful for any young people in and around their age to really dial into what they had to say and hear the honesty of their experience. Thank you for that. Awesome. Uh, anyone? Anyone else? Your takeaway. Um, Mike. Fire away, Lane. One. I agree with everything Barbara said. It was fabulous. And what a way to start was with those three girls. It was amazing. One sentence that Sophia said, I loved. She is encouraging Elena and Savannah. And she said, we've got nine days left. Who knows what can happen? And she is so right on that. You know, a ton of things can happen in nine days. I love that attitude. Really true. And Savannah is 507 points from silver right now, as I saw. Good. So looks like that's on par as well. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you for that, Lane. Mike, it's Paul Gabios. Hi, Paul. Oh, it was a great event. And I 
have a friend who was in the process. He, he, he was listening to something else, uh, but he's on, I know tonight, because I see his name. And um, it, it was good because we had young people uh, really leading the charge and uh, discussing their why about Niken and why they were focusing on this for their uh, lifestyle and their way to create income. It was just, it was just great. And I, I hope the other people will talk about this one because there are recorded Seiko Kais and master days that people can go back to yes. until they get to the next one. That's true. Um, speaking of which, do you have offhand where they can find the Seiko Kai recordings? Yes, it's just in the, uh, it's on uh, My Ni Ken. And you just go to information and it, it, it's very clear. You just keep uh, going down and down and it'll say um, Master Day and Seiko Kai. And it'll have the recordings and the dates and you just press play and it goes. Awesome. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get the, um, the girls uh, segment just as a solo presentation that I think will be very, very useful to share uh, with a new audience, with a younger audience. And I, I mean, I say with the younger audience, but quite truthfully, how inspired were you? Oh, very inspired. Just yeah, because young people have energy. It's when new people are fired up, it's always expiring. I mean, inspiring. And, and but, but even the way they articulated their vision, their why, I just, it was so yes. eloquent and so connected to the essence of what we're doing here. It's rare that you hear those sentences constructed the way they were, they were constructed to articulate that vision and how aligned is that vision with the vision of Niken, um, the vision of uh, Vision 2025. So, um, I'm just really looking forward to having that copy available for people to start to share. Anyone else? Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. And welcome to your guest. Well, who your guest's name is? His name is Blaine. Hello, Blaine. Welcome to the call, Blaine. If you have any uh, questions that you'd like to field, uh, you know, feel free to jump in. Uh, I know you might feel like, uh, you know, you're imposing, but you're not. Uh, this call is for everybody. It's called Aligning with Success. And let me just touch on that for a moment. Um, I come from a, a background of aerospace engineering, and with that background, you delve into a lot of science and a lot of theoretical physics and, and, and information that maybe when I was first learning about it today is known, but back then it was an unknown and they were delving into moving the dial as to what is our understanding of the nature of reality. And over the years, we've come to know that there are laws at work that are playing a role in our everyday lives. And some of these laws have taken the form of technology like cell phones, et cetera, working on frequency and vibration. And, you know, for instance, if I dialed your number, why would your phone ring and not the phone next to you? And that would be because the frequency that is being sent, the broadcast signal that's being sent on a particular frequency and channel is tuned to your phone. And so with that law of vibration, law of harmony, and the harmony uh, uh, being the thing that attracts things that you're in harmony with, we teach. We teach the principles of success, success being something that's inherent to our nature, and that all we need to do is align with it, and therefore attract the elements of it into our life, that it's already out there, it's already around us, it's just that we're not seeing it or tuned to it. And so we're not in harmony with it. Therefore, we don't entertain it. But once we come into harmony with it, we will see it. And therefore, uh, we teach all the principles about what it means to be in harmony with success or aligning with success. And so it's principally based. And that's what I loved about the talk that the girls gave is that it's a universal concept that they were talking about. Of course, Niken is the playground, is the context with which they're able to align themselves and fulfill that vision 
and to empower others to do the same, which is probably the best part of the whole experience, is when you have something you can offer others and that creates that sense of fulfillment and the circle is complete. You give and you receive and the circle is complete. And so um, aligning with success that we teach here is really about learning how to align with those success principles in the way we think, the way we act, um, the, the thoughts that we, the, we host, the, uh, the feelings that we allow and host um, to become dominant in our lives. And the, as we do that, we become more and more aligned to a certain outcome. Linda, you got your hand up. Jump in. What did you get out of this past week? Linda Morris, your hand is up. Hello, Linda. Okay. Oh, there she is. There I am. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, your family is amazing. I believe I'm still reeling from uh, Saturday. It was just outstanding. Um, to tie in with what um, Elaine just said, uh, it made me think back in the day when I went silver. And uh, it was in Long Beach, it was in a while ago. And this wonderful man, you might've heard of him by the name of Bo Tanis, comes up to me and I'm going and meeting all the people, they're getting ready to go to their trip to Mexico, whatever. And I tell him, you know, I'm brand new. I just joined like nine weeks ago and all this good stuff. I'd have, I've been the humans being more. And then he told me this and I've remembered it to this day. He said, remember the last three days of the month, there's something magical about those last three days of the month. Um, just stay focused. And he was wonderful. He said a lot of wonderful things. Gave me this beautiful business card. And to fast forward a few months later, the last three days in the month of May, both my mother and I went silver together. It really did happen. So we can put these three things that I like to um, remember as I'm going through my reboot is that we have... Uh, we have a strategy, we have intention, and that leads to what our wonderful beloved Chuck Branham would say, the mighty mo, called, called um, momentum. When that momentum keeps going, you want to ride that wave and ride that wave, because mm. it will peak you know, a bit, but the momentum is key. So your, your beloved Sophia, congratulations to her with her silver. I know the rest of the family's coming along, but she's on that momentum train. And you want to just get all the mileage you can out of that first run. And then you learn what works, you learn what doesn't, you tweak some things. And it just was a good reminder to me as I talk to people. I just was sharing about the waterfall today a little bit ago. But it's just a reminder that we can forget some of the basics mm. and just, just stick into those basics. So that's what I mostly got out of everybody because they were all wonderful from Gary to your family to, to everybody. You, know, you, it was just wonderful. So thanks to everybody. Thank you. Wonderful. For those of you who just joined us, thanks, Linda. We're just talking about highlights from this past weekend's event. Seiko Kai, if you have a takeaway that you'd like to share. Uh, Hattie Jane, go ahead. You're still on mute. Give us a... Yep, yeah, it's it. getting that cotton picking thing about the work. Sorry. My <laughs> takeaway was I was very proud of Elaine Conley because as a fellow nurse, she went out there and put it out front of how she's being able to assess and help people work with their wellness from her background and understanding uh, is basically the medical work was so basic common sense and showing folks how common sense trumps prescriptions in time, sometimes. So I was very proud of her stepping out and showing how her business works and how she's blending it in with Nikan. Very, very, yeah, wonderful comment. It's always great to hear from people who've had uh, a medical background to see how they're integrating Niken into their integrative health practice. I think it's a, you know, those are the forerunners of the future, right? If it wasn't for these, for these uh, medical professionals who've stepped into the arena of alternative health care, um, you know, they've been a very huge assist to helping establish the credibility of what we're doing. And now what we're doing has a momentum and a credibility of its own, thanks to their, their being forerunners in that. Great. Thank you, Hetty Jane. Anyone else?
Takeaways from Saturday. Barbara Bertucci. Hey, Mike, I'm going to undo, but I have to say I've had surgery and I'm working my way back, but I finally got a shower, so I'm all clean. <laughs> <laughs> I have stitches on my foot, so I have a lot to do to get there, but takeaways were amazing. You know, Mike, it was just a breath of fresh air and uh, kudos to you for your girls. I mean, when you choked up and all the things that they were saying, I mean, she's just a little mini Bob Proctor, you know, or a mini you or whatever. I mean, it was just, gore. I mean, it was just, I, mean, I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's got to be beaming. He's got to be just like elated that she's talking vibration. She's talking, you know, just the whole visualizing and uh, just really, really uh, beautiful. And I love to... I'm not sure which event I got it from. So um, that, you know, she's um, unemployable <laughs> you know, at her age. <laughs> Did you realize, oh my gosh, I've done all this school. I've done all this stuff. And I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to be that when I grow up, right? Like nine to five, how many days a week? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so um, I just thought that was really great. And then uh, really leveraging your credibility but in a way that's not, um, I'm gonna say the wrong word so you can clean it up, submissive or some, you know, like, uh, uh, but she held her ground, she held her power in it and, uh, and just leveraged you to a whole nother degree. And I just think that that's so great. And I love their vulnerability and their um, authenticness uh, self in the midst of what they're doing. And because that's how they're getting to the next level is they're just being really straightforward. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, this is what I felt like. I didn't know what to say. What do I do next? You know, what what is that? And uh, and out on those little teeny branches. Going, oh, my gosh. You know, with friends or people or colleagues and uh, just kudos, really. I, I just am uh, so excited. And it's got me thinking in a different realm and um I did some things out of the box. Um, I have a, a potential sale with a clerk of court with the article that came from Panama with all the air filters in there. So um, he mentioned air filters. I sent him the two videos. I waited a day and then I sent him the article. And then he wrote back, how much do they cost? <laughs> and like, how many do I need for this office? I think he needs three. So anyway, it's got me thinking in a different realm as well. So thank you. Excellent. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paradigm shifts are all around. Paul, yeah. uh, you got your hand up. Are you speaking again? Yes. Yes, I am. Because there's the, I want to speak. Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. Uh, go other, ahead, Paul. The other end, Dennis Williams was on. He's 79 years old. He's still got plenty of energy. And what the girls were hoping or are, are wanting to have happen in their lives, it's happened to him. And he mm. had still new people on. It was, it was just very, that, that was the, the kind of the reinforcing stability face of Nikan to, to have Dennis Williams on. Also. When you when you consider, thank you for that. When you consider the contrast that was shown on that call, I mean, quite a contrast. Uh, everything from the the newest and the youngest to the more veteran, and the and the gap, the time that's passed that's allowed Nikan to continue to be a presence in our in our uh, in our world, to have the medical blessing, if you will, um, from our medical professionals. It it was that that call was just, I mean, it was a. I know it was an internal call, a call that we are sort of, it's designed for our sake as consultants, but if you were a guest on that call, um, man, you would have gotten some something, something, because that was a real powerful message to anybody, anybody who's looking for something they can grab onto that has stability and sustainability and some tradition and some roots and some, some upward potential and some energy and, and vibration. And I mean, just, it had the, you know, it's a, I don't think there's a better package out there and I, we didn't get really much into the products, but I mean, it's inherent, it's implied. You can't be doing business this long and creating these kind of success stories without having something to sell that's powerful. So 
Uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you for that, Paul. Anyone else would like to share your takeaway from Saturday? I do have something that I want to go through, but I just want to hear everybody else first. I'd like to add something if I could, Mike. I like the way Elaine brought in the animal factor that our products are just not for two-legged human beings, but for animals of any description, not just the products, but the nutritionals as well. Yeah. And I thought that was really important to add to the equation because we talk about how products help us. We give personal testimonials, but we don't talk about our fur friends, our fur babies and how they have benefited from the water um, I give my guy Jade Greens. Um, you know, there's so many things and living in a wellness home, they're benefiting from that as well. And the air unit. So I was glad that, uh, that she addressed that because that would open up a lot of people's eyes and probably generate questions that people hadn't thought about applications to animals. And the size of the industry that was mentioned when they talked about the uh, the pad, like the size of the, the industry that people contribute to the well-being of their pets is huge. It's like 10 times the size of Hollywood in its best year. I mean, that's massive. And so, yeah, people will spend money on their pets. And I mean, I've got personal stories of my, my kid's pet, uh, Lily, who's I think, what, 15 now or something like that. 15 or 16, she's like a little puppy. She just does not age. And um, uh, I think it was about two years ago now, coming up on two years anyway, she she ran out into the middle road, something she never does, but that day she did and pow, right into a car and spun her in the air and knocked her unconscious. So it's like, this is a little tiny, like cockapoo. It's like, this is a tiny dog. So cocker poodle so it's a small small pet and uh and she was out and a little bit of blood coming from her mouth and so it was like oh my god and that would have been that would have been devastating so immediately what do we do of course they get her into the get her to the the vet but in the meantime knee can everywhere and the necklaces i think she's got like three wrapped around her neck and so forth uh, she sleeps on the the original pet pad. She's she completely drinks the water. If you ever watch the videos, one of the videos that won in the contest for the the uh, waterfall was uh, was my son who made that video, and his mom talks about how the thing she really noticed was how Lily changed her drinking habits because of the waterfall. So yeah, pets really tell us a lot about you know, what's good for us. And, and Lily was, and by the way, so what happened, long story short is when she, uh, two weeks later, she's back at the vet and the vet's like, I can't believe the recovery of this dog. This is just not normal. And of course we know that we hear that all the time. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, we've got something to offer even our furry, our furry friends. Uh, anyone else want to jump in before I switch over to my notes? What'd you take away from Saturday? Mike, it's Madeline. Can you hear me? I'm on the turnpike. Hi, Madeline. I, hello. I don't know if I can't, I was leaving a house, so I don't know if you mentioned Dave Rolf at all. No, not but, yet. Uh, okay, well, he was a little long and he was typical Dave Rolf, but he there were several points from that. The uh, the why some people are negative about some of the stories of network marketing. However, he ended up being persistent, not giving up till he found the right company. And I would say a 31 year tenure with the right company after all of that, um, some of the bad history that there is was a good lesson. And it was also a good lesson on serial entrepreneurship and the, and the not giving up on a vision and a dream of freedom. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And, um, and, and yeah, again, you know, if you've got a 31-year history with something and there's going to be ups and downs, I don't care what it is, there's, yes. it's never a straight line. So to, but to have this continually become um, a going concern while he was even exploring other things, uh, that, that says a lot as well, that you've got, you've got a lot, you can have more than one life in Nikan. It doesn't have to be strictly about Nikan and only Nikan. 
He went on to do a, a number of other entrepreneurial things and then came back. So, and, and now he seems to be more committed now than ever, because I guess he sees as well a uh, the timing of Nikan, its reemergence into the marketplace under these conditions, um, its prominence, it's destined to be a prominent factor in how people maintain health and well-being as we go forward. And more and more people are looking for that healthy alternative. So yeah, cool. Kudos to him as well. Well, let me jump in with my notes. Um, I just wrote down, uh, this, is, this is straight out of Elena's uh, notes to the team right after the event uh, from, Sil from Sophia. So it's tips for silver. And you guys saw this, but I just want to recap so we have it because it's just solid. And if you want to comment about this afterwards, you please feel free. Number one, make a decision. Set a goal. Do not wait for the resources. So something that I was taught from my mentor, Bob, who, as you heard, is something that Sophia um, is speaking out on in this point was a lot of people use the example of, or at least Bob did in this example of people buying a house and or taking a vacation and saying, well, no, I, 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 I can't do that because I can't afford that. I don't have the money. And so they let not having something, not having the money, not having the right circumstance in their life dictate whether they're going to make a decision or lack making a decision, which in itself is a decision because it's a frequency decision. You can change the word decision and replace it with the word frequency. A decision is a frequency shift. When you change a decision or make a decision, you, you are setting a new frequency, a new tone. And so not making a decision is maintaining the current tone. So that's a, that's a choice. And if the current tone is, I don't have the circumstances to do what I want, buy that house, drive that car, take that vacation, whatever it is. If I don't have the circumstances, then if I don't choose otherwise, I will continue to not have the circumstances. And so her comment being, Bob would say, you know, what you don't, if you haven't made the decision, you don't need the money. You don't need the money until you make the decision. And then when you make the decision, what happens? There's a change in your energy. And now you go from being the person on the outside looking in to the person on the inside looking out saying, okay, how am I going to create this money? How am I going to find the money? How am I going to save the money? How I, whatever. Your mind switches from the person who's saying, I can't do this, or I can't have that, to the person who says, how can I? How, how will I? And so the subconscious mind is either your friend or your foe, depending on what instru instructions you give it. And that's based on your choices or the decisions you're making. And the lack of a decision um, based on current circumstances is a terrible, a very, very poor use of your intellect. It's the worst use of the intellect. It's a demonstration of total abstinence. It's total, total ignorance because you're not making a decision to change the circumstance. So... We need to be helping people make a decision, make a decision, set a goal, do not wait for the resources because it's when you make the decision and you act on that decision that you will start to draw according to the vibration you're in harmony with the circumstances. And boy, I tell you, I can't tell you how important that is. I'm glad she made that number one because it is number one. Nothing changes until you make a decision, nothing. So then number two, of course, Law of attraction plus the law of action. Personal investment, nothing happens without action. So she was talking about this because what she noticed was when she made the investment in her products and encouraged others to do the same as a, as a step, as a mental and emotional step in their business, it shifted them frequency, it shifted them from being somebody on the outside looking at it to somebody on the inside now being an owner of a business, now taking ownership. And it shifted the frequency for my daughters, it shifted it for my niece, and it shifted it for the people that they introduced to, to Niken who made that decision, who made that commitment. So very important thing. We need to apply the law of attraction and the law of action by making a, an investment in our business, a personal investment, nothing happens without action. So tips for silver. So these are the things that we have to encourage people to do. And these are the whys. So I'm giving you the whys. 
Um, leverage your upline. Number three, ask for help. <laughs> okay. Now, some of you might think, well, I should know everything. I don't need to ask for help. It's not the point. It's not about what you know. It's about leverage. Let me repeat that. It's not about what you know. It's about leverage. What do I mean by that? Well, when you introduce somebody to somebody else, then you're leveraging. And what you're teaching the new person is how to leverage. So it's an instruction that you're passing on to somebody. It's a behavior that you're passing on to somebody, a behavior that can change their life. And so make a habit of leveraging your upline in all cases, in all circumstances. So one of the things that the girls do as a matter of course is when they contact somebody, I know how busy they are because I get appointments scheduled in my calendar. They all share my calendar and I see it come up on my calendar. So I know how busy they are because I see the, the appointments. What is the appointment? Every single time they make a call to invite somebody into the process, part of that call includes, includes them booking an appointment for an ABC call with me. That's actually part of the first call, part of the first conversation. And as they explained it is because, of course, if they're going to be partnered with them, they're going to be partnered with their partners and they need to meet who their partners. I'm one of their partners and their coach and their mentors. So they want to introduce me as a part of that process of informing them, getting them fully informed. So that's a great step. That's a very powerful step to teach somebody new, especially in the business. Let's see, number four. And the, I think this was the last step. One of my favorites. Mike, Have before faith. you go on, before yeah. you go on, I want to underline something because I do three ways. I have, um, I do three ways because they're friends of mine. They know me and mm. they know that I know X, Y, Z, or they have me in a box, whatever it is. But there's two parts to that because one is that, um, they see it from a whole nother perspective. They, they get a fresh look without any judgment or prejudgment or whatever. And they can hear them. It's like our, our kids, when they're teenagers, they can't hear a parent any longer. Right. <laughs> they go to this, do this class and all of a sudden they hear the teacher and the teacher's brilliant. And you're like, I've been telling you that for years, you know, but uh, they, they hear it and they get it. The other thing is, uh, which I know you underlined, but I just wanted to kind of put some parentheses around it or some exclamation points or something. It brings a different type of credibility to them. Mm -hmm. It brings a solidify, uh, solidifying of a team, of a um, camaraderie, um, support, structure, uh, stability, leveraging your upline does that. And the Zooms do that and the education does that. But I just think that there's a lot more than we realize with the three ways than we used to do prior. Yeah, so, yeah, it's an and invitation. it's also a time where the, the, you can give accolades to your daughter, what she's bringing to the party, you know, what Most she's certainly. bringing in, and then they can hear it. And mm -hmm. they, it gives them a whole different credibility for, as well. And, and by the way, I do. I, I do exactly that, Barbara. I, I, I talk about how my daughters enrolled me in their vision yeah. to create a new NECAN, a new wave within the context of NECAN to start a whole new generation and how they enrolled me in that vision. And, and so that's part of the conversation that we have. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, when there's, it's no longer sales it steps it out of that realm and talks and it now becomes about purpose. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why are we talking with each other? Why you? And that changes the dynamics from um, a, a person trying to convince anybody, a person trying to sell something. It becomes communication centered around the purpose of the communication. Why are we talking? And that obviously incorporates the needs of the individual, what, who we're talking with, the, re, the role that they could play in what's being proposed. Um, so yeah, that's huge. And my numbers are different. I have decide, I have invest. Mm. And it says, um, you know, you gotta have a little skin in the game. Yeah, that's number and, two. 
Yeah, number two. I mean, maybe I missed you <laughs> saying that. And and I, I, you know, there are people that are coming on board and they think they can do it with mag steps and a waterfall. And maybe they can. And it's going to take a lot of work to do that. But getting the whole thing and, and just investing in yourself and investing in your business shows people what they are best to be successful with buying and doing. And I well, it's such a, de- it's a, it's a demonstration to the universe, to the, the law that you are actually committing to something. It, you know, the, if, if you think of the impersonal universe or even the personal universe standing by and saying, okay, let's see what they do. Let's see, let's see how serious they are about this. And I tell people all the time, best advice given to me comes, come, when, when it comes to investing in your business, come in somewhere between nervous and excited. If you're not nervous, you haven't invested enough, but you ought to be excited because it, it, it does help excite an individual when they have skin in the game, when they're now on the inside. Yeah. Awesome. Number four, have faith and stay open. Leave room for miracles. Do not limit yourself to thinking how something should happen. And, um, and that's a, well, I'll tell you, that is a real stress reliever because if you're somebody who's always anxious about something happening a certain way, well, then you're trying to, you know, tell the universe how to operate at a level of your intelligence rather than a level of its intelligence. And that's just frustrating. Just trust the universe has a, a way of working things out. That's much, that intellect is much superior to yours, that it's connected to all things. And if you're in harmony with those things, it will make sure that the connections are made. So yeah, have faith and stay open. Leave room for miracles. Do not limit your, your, yourself to thinking how something should happen. And I don't care what book you read. If you're reading a success book from anybody, they're going to talk about faith. They're going to talk about how faith is a key component to attracting success, attracting what you're looking for in your life. And so um, it's, it's never missed. Never. I've never read a book ever of any consequence that didn't speak about faith being a, a key factor in, in creating your own reality, creating success. So surely it has to be part of the formula for success for somebody going for silver for anything in that, for that matter. So any other comments that we have uh, before we wrap up? Anyone to jump in? Gita, I think you just unmuted. I did. Thank you. I just want to thank you for repeating all these things that the girls have said the other day, because there is so much information you just can't write fast enough. (laughs) So, you know, this is very helpful as I'm looking at my notes. I go, oh yeah, that's where she said that. So, but with you explaining it a little bit more and making it even more concise. So I appreciate all this, all the um, lessons that you're providing for all of us as well. Thanks. Thank you. My pleasure. Ruth. So, Mike, I don't want to embarrass you, but one of the things that really hit home for me on Saturday was how you responded to your daughters and your niece. And it just had a whole feeling of the love of father and how you were being so proud. And it just gave me chills. And it was really nice to see you that way. Not that you're not. <laughs> it was great to see that. And I you know, to thank you. Thank you, Ruth. I had no idea what they were going to do. I didn't know what they were talking about. Nobody shared anything with me. So I was hearing it for the first time, like you were hearing it. And I was just mesmerized that they could just send a message through that was so clear I don't think I could have tweaked it. I don't think I could have added to it. In fact, I think I would have just taken away from it if I'd have stepped in at all. So it was just, it's amazing when you hear something. It's like, it's like listening to music that from a, from an artist that's, you know, really ahead of their time. And that's what it felt like. It felt like, you know, they, they, I I may have been part of the influence in giving birth to this process, but they have taken it to another level. And that's when you just go, wow. Yeah. So, well, it was great to see, and that was really important. I just wanted to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Well, you know, I wish all of you some success with your family as well, because it really is a family affair. If you think about it, who do you want to benefit from this more, more than anyone? Your family. And it's hard because it's your family and you don't want to you know, twist anybody to anybody, anybody's arm. Um, but what you want is to encourage them. And that's why that ABC, by the way, can maybe be the difference between them really looking at this and not looking at this because they know you as the family member. 
they don't have to talk to you or listen to you they would the way they would somebody they don't really know that well they wouldn't be on their best behavior with you as they would with somebody else and that information that communication will have a completely different tone and 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 penetrate much deeper when it's coming from a third party so if you're having tough time getting family to listen get an a on the call get somebody to help you make that that communication get that communication across and uh that'll help yes barbara um i just want to uh, reiterate because i'm a promoter <laughs> um that everybody put down the october convention and the test or the challenge could be because we used to do this all the time is, can you get six legs there, right? Can you get six legs to the convention? And what better way now we're on Zoom, right? So, um, but one way I thought of was on Saturday 9-11, they're doing the HBM, the um, uh, life cycle plan. And some of us who used to host actually had them, you know, and, but, you have either a coffee or a tea or a gathering and you have all the products on the table and then everybody's got spaces to do their, their boards, right, o around. Um, but get people in and get them doing their vision board. Just have a vision board party. It doesn't have to be a knee can vision board party, just a vision board, you know, um, party gathering because you- That's a really interesting idea. I'm gonna make that suggestion um, to, to the girls because I think, I think that was one of the most powerful exercises I had ever experienced in my life up until that point. And I still have in my garage, I have my left-handed, well, I'm ambidextrous, so I kind of can cheat, but um, my drawing, right, of all the things that I want. And I'm, I'm sitting here with my house on the water in St. Pete, by the beach, you know, all the toys. <laughs> Vision he, board come to, come to life. Right, all the trips, all the different things. And, and so now we get to go to the next level, right? And, and realizing that I haven't put it out there or like the girls said, write it down on paper, do your 100 name list on paper, right? I haven't done that. I have a little circle board where I might throw a name up on a whiteboard, but I haven't sat down and actually written out another 100 name list. I did buy all your, you know, packet of all your stuff and all the things and all the flyers and they sit here because I'm not doing any marketing I'm not out you know I'm, I'm at home on zooms so I'm like figuring out what to do and how to do it and where to where to play again right how to get back out there hey listen I've been mailing those things out I've been oh, getting yeah. those things oh yeah I put those packages together and I mail them out to people so that we have the same working tools on opposite ends of the zoom conversation and then we can go through them together well, but, but marketing wise, do you mail out the cards? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, I have the envelope. Um, I don't know if I have one on my desk on here. Because I wasn't sure about the ones Dave had, if that could actually be put with a stamp on it. So if you look at everything at Life and Balance Tools, there's even a yeah. package that's designed a, to a, like a, a getting started. Can we do that another time? Sure. Can we do like... This is, is what I mail out here. here it is. This is it. So yeah, this is yeah. the envelope right here. Yeah. Welcome. Okay. And it's sort of the welcome kit. And in it is all of the things, you know, like the self-care magazine and all the little cards that, that describe, you know, Nikan and the, the compensation plan, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they're scattered all over my desk right now. Oh, here they are. Okay. So there's the wellness home, the cash flow on the backside. There's the cash flow quadrants because we talk about that in our presentations and the idea that this is a business of leveraging compounding. The support system, the rhythm of the business. Of course, our five pillars tool. And what we're asking people to do is become informed. This is the old incentive, but I include the new incentive, the compensation plan, French and English. There's even a Spanish one if you need that. So yeah, this goes out. I also include yeah. if there's somebody who's um, you know far far away, I'm going to include the Nikan business plan, and of course the million dollar list. This is the paper that Sophia was talking about, writing the names down, because that's that's a tool. And when you get people using tools, it's an it's an easier business to duplicate because then you're just using tools, and you're referencing tools, 
and everybody has a common language in that the tools give us the common language. So, um, you know, if we're, if we're sponsoring people into Niken, we're enrolling people into a system, we need to teach the system. And the tools define the system. Yeah. In addition to the tools, and they make reference to it, are the events. So we also have now the published calendar, right? Well, and I know that you make a decision with the person that once they invest, they commit to their time, they clear their calendar, like there's these checkoff lists. Yes. And, and then you play with them. Then yes. they are considered... And I think I've dropped some of that out, or maybe I, I've been a little, la not lax, um, tenacious. You know, like, uh, uh, have, um, I'm a little... I, I, you I, dropped I, the ball on that. Okay, we can pick it up again. Yeah. You know, one of the things that's coming out loud and clear right now, working with this young group, is until they set a financial goal, which is the first step, one of the first three steps in the, in the first page of this business plan, until they actually set a goal for what it is that they want to create in their business. And one of the first things I teach them is you are not your business. So you give your business a name. So now what is this business of yours producing in the next 90 days? What is this business of yours going to generate a year out from now? We're going to look back and say, okay, we've taken a year to build this thing. It's now a year. What are we expecting for our, for our company? It's now three years out and we work backwards from there to decide what it what it needs what needs to happen but what's important is if they don't have a financial goal it doesn't give them the horsepower the energy to go and do anything nothing changes so you've got to really help them define what it is that they want in order for them to go after it and so that's one of the most important steps in the getting started process and by the way it makes it a lot easier then for them to understand the connection to their investment you know right. if i'm investing $500 or $1,000, but my goal is to make $100,000 a year. It's, it's, it's relative, right? That thousand doesn't seem so big when you're talking about making 100,000 a year. So um, here's an interesting thing. Um, I talk to them about when I'm doing the goal, I say, let me ask you, how much are you currently earning in your job? And they'll tell me a number. And I say, how many hours a week do you have to work? So let's say it's uh, it's $3,500 a month and they have to work 40 hours a week. Okay. So then I ask them, is this your first job or did you have to you know, work your way up to that? And so we get a, a timeline. Oh no, I've been working for three years. Okay. Three years. And did you go to school before that? Did you get an education? Oh yeah. I went to university of blah, blah, blah. And I got a degree in blah, blah, blah. And I said, did that cost you any money? Mm. <laughs> And they always say a lot of money. So I say, okay, what? What is it? Three-year course, a four-year course, four-year course, okay. And, and how much did it cost you? Let's just say a number, $80,000. All right, so you've just told me what you're willing to do to earn $3,500 a month. Oh. You just told me you're willing to go to school for four years at a cost of $80,000, work for three years on top of that, and then put in 40 hours a week to make $3,500 a month. That's what you're willing to do because you just did it. Now, let's talk about the business you're going to create. What are you willing to do to create $100,000 a year income? You see how, wow, it's like a technicolor. Everything comes into focus. Because when you compare it to what they've already demonstrated in terms of their willingness and what they are currently willing to do, it really puts everything into perspective. And now Nikan is not a whim and a prayer. Nikan is not a lottery ticket. It's now a way that they can, they can define and they can see more clearly as a way and a worthwhile way. And it's also a perspective that it's not going to happen overnight, that you got to be willing to do what it takes. And obviously you're willing to do a lot to get 3,500 bucks a month. What are you willing to do to get 8,000 bucks a month? You willing to work for the next three to five years, part-time, you know, maybe 10, 15 hours a week consistently every day where you're making at least two new contacts a day. Are you willing to do that? And all of a sudden everything's coming into, into view. Okay. Well, I'll tell you where it starts. It starts with your contact list. Are you willing to make a list? You see, if, if you, if you put it into perspective, then, then it really helps them understand that number one, you're serious. Number two, this is serious. And number three, they are willing 
if they're asked the right question, if, they're, if it compares to what they've already demonstrated themselves to be willing to do. Anyway, so we're a little bit off track. That's a bit of a training, Good, worth, certainly worthwhile. Paul, I see you're unmuted. You've been unmuted for a while. Are you waiting to jump in? Yeah, I wanted to ask you a very specific question about ABCs. Okay, so I use the the better way link. Uh, the the moment when I was my after my first conversation, it's led to that, and I want to see if they what they do if they listen to it. If they uh -huh. that's a sort of little tool. I'm asking you specifically: Do your daughters do a three way before? they have looked at that link and they have you direct them to that or what? No, the, the, the link is the first thing they get. Okay. And um, they usually preface the link with a little bit, it's a little script. Once they, they complete the call and they say, I'm gonna send you something in the little set message they send, it says, I'm so excited, looking forward to um, meeting you or connecting with you on Tuesday at three, whatever the date was that the ABC was set for. Um, meanwhile, watch this first, bold capital letters, watch this first, and it's a link, and it's one of two links, and then they say, and then when you're done that, uh, go to the this URL, which is the, the URL, to you would be the, a better way, and watch the first four links, the rest you can, you can uh, take a look at, because it just adds to the, your perspective, so they insist on the first four, but then they say, there's more if you want to dig in a little bit further, but the watch this first video is interesting. So if they're talking to a person who's talking about freedom of time, that that's something really important to them, then they're asking them to watch a video that I did for Mexico for a training I did called join the 1%. Yeah. Okay. So they're saying, watch this first. And they, they have that link as the first link. And I don't know, it's 10, 15 minutes long, but it gets into the cash flow quadrants which is critical, especially for people who've never been educated on that, because they're saying they want freedom of time, but they have no clue what that means or even how to accomplish that. And if they don't have context for that, then Nikin is going to be a bit of a mystery. So I created that 1% video, which contextualizes how the Nikin business model works in that every time you add somebody to your team, it's, a, it's an engine, little engine that could. It's another income generation um, uh, asset to your business and you can continue to grow your business and the asset by multiplying through efforts of others. So it creates the context for the conversation. And then when they get into Nikan and, and they look at that video and they start to see what's on the, on the webpage um, of the uh, a better way, then they start to understand the, the moving parts to that. So when I actually engage them in the ABC, they have a context, they have a reference point. And then the questions become more about what did you see? What do you want? How, to, you know, making sense of what they've seen and see if we can advance them to the next conversation, which is the what conversation. The what it's conversation. It's a great way to do things because it duplicates so much more easily. Most certainly. And it sorts people. Exactly what it's intended to be. It's a sorting process. And I keep, in, I keep telling the girls and they, they, they know they, they've understood this now that some will, some won't. So what next? It's, it's not personal that people will see it or they won't based on where they're at in their mind and in their, their, you know, what they see for themselves. Barb, let's wrap it up. You got one last comment? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, reiterate the 9-11 HBM uh, vision board so you gather with people in the morning he's having a just a presentation in the beginning kind of opening up the vision then you do uh vision boards on the floor you might be cutting magazines different things i ask people to bring a dish bring something and when they bring something they're gonna come ah good great good for you okay and, yeah and bring so bring you know i'm having soup and this you bring the bread or you bring the fruit, you know, whatever that is, or the treat, and they will definitely come. Um, and then Jeff is doing a thing at the very end where you present your life cycle plan. And so everybody wants to stay to the end because that when you get to do your presentation of what you've gotten, whether he's breaking us out in groups or whatever, it doesn't matter. I think that's a way to get people to stay to the end and then have HBM in October which then feeds to the convention in October.
Good idea. You're always looking at the next event. What are you inviting them to? What are you uh, having them as you open up their vision? And that's what Dennis Williams was so great about saying, I don't close anybody. I mm. open them up. And so that was really good. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. We had a good recap of this past week's event. Um, and hope you're taken away from this so that the next event, which is uh, a month away, is going to be an event that you wholeheartedly leverage. So what does it begin with? Make a decision. How many people are you going to have at the next event? You personally. Then ask every member of your team the same question. Write it down. Share it. Make a commitment. And now go to, go to, go to work. That's it. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us. And look for the recording in the moments to come. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.